This is a disclaimer, there may be misleading points in the video. I have tried my best to use reliable sources and such, however I cannot say for sure that these sources are 100% accurate. I also lack quite a bit of knowledge, especially when it comes to the martial arts aspect of Chinese culture. If any of you are knowledgeable and spot any mistakes in this video, please do point them out in the comments below. Lastly, this video has spoilers up to the start of the city level. Please do keep that in mind before you continue watching. Although most of you already know this, all 12 associations are associated with a specific number and nationality. For example, the Hana Association is related to the number 1 and Korea. Another example would be the Shi Association, the number 4 and Japan. In a similar vein, the Liu Association is associated with the number 6 and China, which is what we're going to be talking about today. The Liu Association specializes in all-out war, and it shows in their combat pages. Most of their pages have a reliance on emotion, granting them more emotion coins on use or buffing pages when they're above a certain emotion level. This lets them get extremely strong very quickly, gaining emotion levels and overwhelming enemies with high cost and high power cards that they are very easily able to expend due to their ability to refresh their light. As a Liu Fixers page says, 9 out of 10 requests are resolved by simply marching towards enemies and defeating them in battle. After all, they are the Liu Association, the one that specializes in war. To most, this would mean that their technique would be constantly charging into the enemy, but this isn't quite right. The Liu Association doesn't simply advance, attack, and hope that it works. They advance, attack, and know that it works when looking at specific circumstances. Sissel's page explains it relatively well. The Liu engages in battles that are already won. It's crucial to assess the strength of both the ally and the condition of the enemy before you determine if you should advance or retreat. Mirissa's page also brings up the tactics that Xiao emphasizes. A mercenary's work is to deceive, to fool the enemy into believing that we are advancing when we defend, to make the enemy believe we will trust from the front when we strike from above. The reason I bring this up is because it's all shockingly similar to early Chinese warfare. I'm mainly going to be talking about one source that is usually misquoted, The Art of War, written by Sun Tzu. I'll be using the translation written by Lionel Gills, which you can find on the Internet Classics archive. So first of all, let's take a look at what Cecil's book says. The Liu engages in battles that are already won, with a strategy that is fated to lead us to triumph, we face enemies that are fated to lose. In The Art of War Chapter 1, lines number 12 to 14 roughly state that a simple basis of comparison can be made between two armies. This comparison is made up of seven considerations that I won't go into here, which will allow you to accurately forecast victory or defeat. This is what Cecil means by victory isn't necessarily won in battle. The Liu already knows that they are victorious after comparing circumstances. Moving on, let's talk about Mirus' line about deception and draw another parallel to the art of war. Chapter 1, line number 18, all warfare is based on deception. Line number 19, hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe that we are near. There's another line in Mirus' page that also relates to the art of war. We must seem unable when able to attack, that the enemy may grow arrogant. Chapter 1, line number 22. If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak that he may grow arrogant. It's that similar. Interesting, right? Unfortunately, we don't really find out more about the Liu's tactics beyond this. So moving on, I'm going to talk about their weapons along with a few of their combat pages. The unnamed fixers and Xiao before her transformation use a specific type of Chinese sword, of which there are two, the Dao and the Tian. The Dao is a single-edged Chinese sword, but it has this distinct curve that instantly rules it out as what the Liu use. The Jian, on the other hand, is a double-edged Chinese sword that seems to match their equipment pretty well. Lowell and Xiao's ego both use a Guan Dao, a Po weapon that is said to be invented by the legendary general Guan Yu. It's a pretty imposing weapon in size and is often used specifically in Shaolin martial arts. It's extremely heavy, and so it's usually used to train and condition one's strength. While both guests that use the weapon absolutely decimate your team with a wide sweeping mass attack, the weapon's actually more meant to deflect and disarm an opponent in a duel. It's also actually pretty impractical to use in a battlefield due to its weight. And that's about it for historically accurate equipment. So I'm gonna move on to what actually inspired this video in the first place, the Liu Association and Chinese Martial Arts, also known as Wushu. Have you ever wondered why the Liu relies so much on emotion coins and gaining emotion? In more traditional Chinese martial arts, take for example Shaolin arts, they often use martial arts as a method of obtaining balance, at least for those types of martial arts that are based on Taoist philosophy. Specifically, the balance of the emotion in the heart and the wisdom in the head. This is what the Liu's combat style is truly about, reaching higher emotion levels and utilizing that emotion effectively in combat, but never truly letting it cloud the mind. Expressing your inner feelings but also retaining rationality. 
Referring back to Mirza's page, it states something that Xiao says. In order to defeat the enemy, we must be roused to anger, to remember that one's emotions must remain a means to motivate the body and not the ends, and to exploit the enemy's wrath with this in mind. Basically allowing your emotion to strengthen your will to fight, but never allowing it to take control. Some of you may also be wondering why the Liu association is so related to fire. The Liu apply burn quite a lot and their animations, sprites, and even combat pages all seem to be associated with flame quite a bit. Honestly, I'm not very sure about this section. Most of my sources are pretty weird for this one, so do take it with a grain of salt. I point you to the Chinese philosophy of Wu Xing, also known as the Five Elements. It's made up of five major parts. Wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Fire in this philosophy represents enthusiasm and the joy we feel. In Xing Yi Chen, another form of Chinese martial art, fire represents an explosion. Known as the pounding fist, it is described as exploding outward like a cannon while blocking. What weirds me out about this is that Xiao's ego is heavily based off the Dragon King, also known as the Dragon God, which is a water deity. A little bit contradictory to everything I've said so far, but I thought it was still an interesting thing to note. We finally reached the last section of the video, which is about the combat pages that the Liu use. Let's start with one of my favorites, Tie Shang Kao. Literally in English, it's translated as leaning on the mountain. Found in Ba Qi Chen, the move is extremely aggressive. You have to be extremely close before hitting the opponent with your shoulder. But what's interesting is that Project Moon actually showcases an important part of the move when the attack goes off. Here you can see that the attack starts with a kick that makes their back face the camera before they rotate to face the camera and push against the enemy with their shoulder. That starting kick isn't just for game balance in terms of page power. The real-life counterpart's power does not actually come from the shoulder itself, but the twisting of the waist and the hip. It's these small little things that really add up in my opinion. It's really cool of Project One to do. The fact that they put in these really really small little details and uh, that's one more in the jar for me simping over Project One. But more importantly, let's talk about Xiao's ego, her combat pages and Chinese mythology. Most of her unique pages and passives are named after the nine children of the dragon god, which most people already know due to her passive. Even though most of you already know about this, there's probably still some trivia that you're missing. There's actually some major differences in translations, especially between the Chinese or Japanese versions and the English translation. Let's start with one of the more awkward ones that you may have noticed in that list I showed earlier. Sunny. In the English version, Xiao uses a page called Jin Ni instead. However, this is actually inaccurately translated or transcribed as far as I know. None of the nine dragons have a name that corresponds to it. The page in both Japanese and Chinese share the characters Sunny. Instead, the eighth son of the dragon in some myths. Another one that is a bit weirder is Ba Xia, Xiao's passive that prevents her from taking damage from burn and reduces damage from status ailments. The Chinese variant has a completely different method of writing it as Gong Fu Zhen Shui with the first two characters pointing to the seventh son of the dragon god in certain myths. Ba Xia is actually another name for the exact same dragon, which is where the English translation's name for her passive comes from. And that's about it when it comes to differences in the translations as far as the names of the children go. I'm not going to be talking about any more on the translation as if I did, we'll be taking way too much time. Instead, let's move on to her ego and combat pages. One thing to note is that almost all the new combat pages that Xiao uses in Act 2 are related to the 9 dragons in more than just name. I'll only be going into 3 examples as if I had to go into all of them that would take a lot of time and at that point would be its own video. Pulao is one of her weakest ego pages and also one of her passives in her reception. In the reception, it activates on every odd numbered scene, nullifying all power effects applied on herself and the librarians. In Chinese mythology, it's a smaller dragon that is known for its raw. That's primarily the reason why both when the passive activates and when the ego page is used, a loud roar is played. Next, I'll be talking about... Shiwen. It's another regular combat page that Xiao uses, which makes the user take less damage from burn, even buffs and heals them if they have burn applied when using the page. This relates to the actual Dragon Sun. The dragon is put on roofs and acts as a protection against fires for the building, thanks to its control over the water element. And lastly, we have... Bihan. This is another combat page that Xiao uses, but it's special in that it only has block die present on it. This refers to how the dragon was often painted on prison doors in order to keep watch, never taking action, but still preventing anything from going through. I know I didn't go into much, but that's all I'll be covering for the 9 children of the dragon. This video is already getting a bit too long, and I do still have one more thing to cover, being Xiao's reverse skill. In Chinese mythology, dragons have a skill on their throat which grows in the opposite direction of all the other skills. They really, really dislike it when people touch it. It's so bad that it's said they instantly kill the one who touched it. 
This is what Xiao's reverse skill references, clashing with the page buffs her excessively with 4 strength and 4 endurance, but it also reduces her stagger resist by a staggering amount. <laughs> and that's it for this section and in fact the entire video. There are definitely a lot more cultural references and even some details that I didn't put into this video simply because I'm kinda scared I get them wrong, and there's also probably quite a few that I just missed. If you do notice anything, please put them down in the comments below. As usual, thanks for watching until the end. This was pretty different from my regular stuff, and it was pretty hard to make because of the amount of research I had to do. But it was still quite enjoyable to make, so if you guys want to see a certain association or you're a bit curious about their stuff, please do talk about them in the comments below and I'll see what I can find about them. Make sure to visit again, yeah? See you guys later.